thank you, Jean, for offering these two powerful and also beautiful readings. Grace, peace, and mercy be with you all from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Last week, Sunday afternoon, the Rocky Mountain Synod Assembly, this is a gathering of the about 160 plus congregations that make up our Rocky Mountain Synod and we are part of the Evangelical Lutheran Church of America. At the conclusion of this annual gathering to which David Lizon and I went and attended from Friday through Sunday afternoon, I drove up to Loveland, Colorado. There I gathered with 18 members of Barbara Woodall's family. Barbara had passed away on December 13th, 2016, a few months shy of her 102nd birthday. We had done at her home in January a memorial service, but now after winter, up there in Loveland where there is a beautiful family plot, we gathered to bid farewell and to bring her remains, her ashes to the ground, and to say these timeless words that many of you have heard said at funeral gatherings, at a graveside service, at a cemetery, dust to dust and ashes to ashes. One of her children, her son Richard, had come all the way from New Zealand where he lives to be part of that graveside service. And in a very moving testimony, he bid farewell to his mother. It was really a, a capstone, an exclamation point to a beautiful five-year relationship with the family of Barbara Woodall um, as we gathered there at Loveland Burial Park. I was thinking about this and about many other situations where you and I have been in where we have to say goodbye. As I read this text from the 14th chapter of John's Gospel. We've been in many such situations and we struggle to find and to come up with words. What do we say? It depends. It depends. One of the experiences that holds true, I guess, is that it is always easier for the one leaving than for the one left behind when you have to say goodbye. Or if this is only temporary, or if this is forever, like when you bid farewell to a loved one who has passed. And we have certainly done that on numerous occasions also in the past year. So we work on saying goodbye, stealing ourselves for what is to come. This past week somebody came into the office and told me after having received my letter and reading it and came up to me and expressing her support but also saying change, 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 always change. True. We map out steps that hopefully will help us along that change, that time of change that is to come. <laughs> change, change, change. And of course, I am thinking of Susan and myself, who will be saying many goodbyes in the weeks and months to come to you and to friends that we have made over these almost eight years of our time at Community of Joy. Many of you have expressed to me in personal words your support and also your sorrow about Susan and my decision to return to Germany. Let me say that your words have been very helpful and I am grateful for the support you have expressed to me because they remind me, they remind me of the words that my mother told me when I left Germany um, recently. And um, she said, Michael, she said, come back soon. Come back soon. And um, that was really powerful. And now I can say to her, yes, 
yes, Mom and Dad, we're coming back as soon as we can. Um, and just to put that into some context, you know, um, it's Mother's Day today. And um, on Friday, I got a call from my dad that my mother's in the hospital. And that's just the situation that I can't miss anymore. I just have to be there. I need to be there. And Susan and I need to be available. That just is something that has been on my heart and on my mind for a long time. And it has been a real ache, let me tell you. And those of you who've gone through that know what I'm talking about. Blessing, McKenna. So here's blessing again. How do you say goodbye? These words from Jesus in John's 14th chapter are part of what is called his farewell speech. Jesus is in the midst of saying goodbye to his disciples who have been at his side for three years. And so this is a very personal and pastoral moment for Jesus and his friends. As we see Jesus as a, you could say, a shepherd to his friends. Because John 14 is embedded in Jesus' last full day and evening and night with his disciples. His farewell speech stretches over five chapters. It starts in chapter 13 of John, where he washes his disciples' feet and then goes into his farewell speech. He needs to let his disciples, his friends, know what is about to happen to him in Jerusalem and by extension to him, to them themselves. And so he reminds them, he reminds them, remember what I am saying to you now because days and times are coming where what I am saying to you as I'm going through my arrest, my betrayal, my trial, my crucifixion, you will need to remember these words. Here Jesus is the good shepherd to them. He is his most compassionate, his most loving to them as he extends to them what is about to come and that they will not just be flailing somewhere in the wind, but that he will be present with them and that they are to remember what he has told them. So he's preparing his disciples on whom he has relied so much for his pending departure. He knows that this will be an incredibly challenging, difficult moment for them. And so he says, do not let your hearts be troubled. But let's be honest, that kind of falls short of the mark because their hearts are troubled. They're very troubled. And they have every reason to be. Do not let your hearts be troubled. Believe in God and in me, Jesus says. The disciples need to hear these words. And you and I need to hear them as well. They are confirmation. They are affirmation. And they are also guidance and direction that the disciples will not be by themselves will not be out there by themselves or on their own. Jesus' words are meant to affirm them, to remind them, I am with you, though it is going to be different in the way I am with you. Yes, as Jesus starts to say goodbye to his disciples, to his friends who have been at his side for three years. He is also emphasizing that in these farewell words that he is offering to them, do not let your hearts be troubled. Believe in me and believe in God that their relationship Though it is going to change, their relationship is not ending. 
for the disciples, that will be critical to remember. To remember what they have experienced together, to remember what he has said to them, because he will continue to abide with them and they hopefully with him. That is, I think, the single word that stands out in these five chapters. Abide with me as I abide with you and love one another, the commandment that he gives to them in chapter 13. So here he is saying goodbye with support and with truthfulness. And I think you and I know that not every goodbye, of course, is like this. But we need to hear in our goodbyes that we are not alone, that we are not left in the lurch. It also means that the disciples will have to navigate and go through some really difficult situations. They don't, have, they don't have a guidebook for what lies ahead of them. But one thing is sure. Jesus is their good shepherd, our good shepherd, as we go forward together in these coming weeks and months. And there will be plenty of other human shepherds who step in from Bishop Jim Gonia, from members of his staff, from people at Community of Joy, and in the many said prayers silently and aloud, and in the worship services for which we will gather to affirm and to confirm to one another that indeed you are, Lord, the Good Shepherd, and where you go, we will follow you. We will follow you in good faith, in good courage, trusting, not exactly knowing where we will go, but only that you will lead us, that you will lead us. That has always been, that has always been the direction and the affirmation that our Lord has given to his disciples way back then and that he gives to us going forward. Thanks be to God. Amen.